What's up, Trainiacs? So we are still here at the Zwift Academy Tri-Team, and this here nondescript black building, well, come over here, come over here, come over here. This is the specialized wind tunnel. I'm gonna give you a tour of it, and we're gonna explain how specialized and the specialized athletes use the wind tunnel, a bike fit, and metabolic testing all together to get the most aero benefits possible. Aero is everything. I'm Todd Carver, and I'm the head of human performance at Specialized. It's a three-phase process. It starts with a retool bike fit that includes a flexibility assessment, to figure out what the rider's limits are. Then we move into motion capture technology to record the rider's angles and movement patterns on the bike to make sure their baseline position is biomechanically sound. Then we bring them into the human performance lab and we test their metabolic power to find out their functional range of power output. Well, what we really want to do is minimize their power loss, especially on a time trial bike as you drop a rider into a lower, more aggressive position, a lot of times they lose power. So we want to quantify that. Then we put them into the wind tunnel and record the um, aerodynamic drag. The whole goal of this whole process is to create a comfortable position that's fast and biomechanically sound. So the metabolic test, um, what we do ultimately, we record um, oxygen consumption at a given power output. So from there, we can see as we change position, if the oxygen consumption increases or decreases, it's a sign of energy expenditure. So as oxygen consumption increases, the rider is working harder, and as it decreases, the rider is um, saving energy. We relate it to aerodynamics because we put it into the same units of measure. We boil everything down to watts. So from the oxygen consumption, you can convert that to kilocalories per minute burned or kilojoules per minute burned, and ultimately to watts of power. And then in the wind tunnel, we do the same thing as we record how many watts a rider is saving or how many watts a position is costing a rider. You can play around, pick your head up, put your head down, feel like you're in an airplane, bring your shoulders in, bring you your shoulders out. Like you. Those warm-up minutes are for you to play around and figure out okay. how your body interacts with the wind. Yep. After about five minutes, I'm going to start with some practice collection of data so uh -huh. you get into the rhythm and we'll show you how that goes. What will happen for that is I'll press a button, you're going to hear four beeps. Okay. I want you to be in position when those beeps happen. Okay. After that fourth beep, there's going to be a blue progress bar on the top of the screen. Yeah. I think what we've learned over the years with all this testing is a lot of times you can get a double win. So you can make a position more powerful and more aero. There's a, there's a couple things that are very important aerodynamically and metabolically. Aerodynamically, it's really comes down to how a rider holds their head in their shoulders. So that's, that's the most important thing. So a lot of times when you go too low with a position, they pop their head up and they round their shoulders. Well, we've learned just aerodynamically, too low or really low is not always good. A lot of times we get a little benefit by coming up with the bars and teaching the rider to hold a different posture. And that just so happens to be favorable for metabolic power too. Because as you come up with the bars, we usually see a savings in energy expenditure. So we're, what our goal really is with most riders is to create a faster position aerodynamically that doesn't cost them any power loss. But like, what are the consistent yep. triathletes should be thinking about for aero gains? Shave your legs and arms and concentrate on your clothing. Get tight clothing that is the fabric is um, technically advanced for aerodynamics. Those are the biggest wins. Okay, I, I can't let the shave your legs and arms comment just go explain. <laughs> hair is slow. I mean, skin is slow, but when you have hair on there, it really creates a lot of drag. So it really shocked me too when we started testing this because I didn't really think it was that important as a rider to shave my legs. I thought it was more for you know, cleaning out wounds and things like that. But it turns out through aero testing, it is a huge factor and it's almost similar to like getting an aero helmet. I mean, in a 40 kilometer time trial, it can save, you know, 30 seconds to a minute easily um, by just doing, doing those two things, optimizing your clothing and shaving your, your limbs. I think in general, it's like what we've been able to do here with Specialized, no other bike company is really doing. We started with Specialized Purchase Retool, 
um, almost seven years ago now. And then from there, we've been able to progress the fit process into human performance testing and aero. So when we combine all those factors, you really get the best out of the fit. Okay, so that there is the specialized wind tunnel. Now I wanna give you a tour of the full building because it's kind of neat how they've got this set up. Like what's in there looks really futuristic, but once you come up here, it's a warehouse. And then this entire structure is what's housing the wind tunnel. And it's propped up because, I don't know why, but this whole big structure is just inside essentially like a cavernous building and it's enormous in there. What they've got is way down there, all of those propellers suck the air out from the rest of this building and then it's got to suck through this gate because it actually needs to fill air with that as it's sucking past the athlete. That's actually like eight inches of metal. And as they start ramping it up, it gets really loud in here. As you come across the building, it's just the same thing. It's like this cavernous building that is really like unimpressive until you get into that wind tunnel. Back here is where all of the wind gets blown out. And look at these. These are enormous. So there are six of these turbines spinning. Here, let me give you some context of how big these are. This is me. And that's me on a wind turbine. Hands fully outstretched. I am not from top to bottom big enough to cover that. I'm small though. Wow, it's enormous. Safety first. We got Craig Alexander when he did the Ironman Kona world record in 2011. A little story about that. We've got the construction of the wind tunnel here. You can see that everyone is so far down low because the whole thing is propped up all high. We've got more of the construction here, the size of the turbines, and Gwen Jorgensen right here. Everyone's been in the wind tunnel besides me. We'll see. Maybe someday. All right, Trainiacs, if you aren't already subscribed, hit the subscribe button below because a lot of this fun behind the scenes sort of stuff that we've got going on, lots coming. Later.